Welcome back to JP's Budget Collecting and our weekly look back at the hot comics from six months ago. This week we're looking back at the hot comics from October 7th, 2022, and I'm recording this on April 6th, 2023. Uh, I give you those dates so you know when this information is actually relevant because the market is always moving and changing, as we will see as we look at the price differences in these books from just six months apart. Uh, as always, we're looking back at the CBSI Hot Top 10 and the Comic Tom Key Collector Hottest Trending Comics of the Week. Uh, each week, they put out a list of 10 books uh, that are trending in the market that are either up in sales, up in price, uh, are really moving because of some sort of news. We look at what the factors were that made them hot six months ago, what's happened since, if anything, and how the market has responded to those books so that we all make a little better decision about what books we chase in the moment and what books we are patient on. Uh, this week, we got 19 books to talk about again, so let's dig into this list. Uh, first up, we have Isome, number one. Uh, this is basically, this is an indie, uh, independent comic being written by a very controversial author. I don't know a lot about it. I don't really interest me. I kind of avoid these political things if I can, for the most part. Uh, but back then, Rock Hobbies, right after release, were going for $175-$200 on the secondary market. Now it's a sixty to one hundred thirty dollar book raw, uh, two hundred to three hundred on a nine point eight. But overall, that's still a trap. Uh, still well down uh, from what it was when it first hit the market. Actually, in some ways, it's performed better than a typical political book has, with only being a trap and not a dumpster fire. But it's borderline dumpster fire also, so not much better. It's and that's not unusual. Some of these books that really only have the politics going for them don't do very well. Uh, next, we have Spawn number one. Uh, we got news that there was a new director attached to the long-awaited reboot of a Spawn movie. Uh, back then, it cost 9.8 to jump up to 225 from their usual 175-ish. Uh, now, raw copies are 20 to 40. 9.8 are back 125 to 200, which is back exactly where they typically are long-term. This is not a surprise. A book like this, it has such a strong established value um, of because there's so many of them. Um, it's a book that's always popular, even when it's not in the news. There's always people that are interested in this book. Um, but there's so many of them that it kind of just has a ceiling. Occasionally, it'll bump over it because of some sort of news. But really, it's going to return back to its typical price for the most part. Next, we have We Live, number one. It hit the list because we got news that it's headed to Netflix. Um, well, the author was hinting that it was headed to Netflix, I should say, back then. Um, caused raw copies to jump up to 25 bucks. 9.8 was hitting 90. Uh, now it's a five to twenty dollar buck. Uh, 9.8 30 to 100, so pretty good range there. But overall, this is a trap. Uh, as most of the sales, raw sales are around ten dollars. Most of the 9.8 sales are. 50-ish as opposed to that 100 range. So yeah, I'm still putting this down as a trap just because of where the actual majority of the sales are, even though there's an occasional book a little closer. Um, and yeah, this is a book I still want to read. Um, I've heard it's a good read. I haven't gotten to it yet. Need to. Uh, next, we have, we're moving into our covers and we have a ton of covers to talk about this week. First up, we have Dark Ride, number one, the Tom Whalen One Per Store Retailer Thank You variant that's kind of a homage to a Disney Park. Um, back then, raw copies of this were 25 to 125 is what they were saying, but really, they mostly were selling in 60 to 70-ish range, so that's really what we're going to use for a comparison. Uh, now, raw copies are more like 30 to 60, with a 9.8 only going for 150. So this is an I'll be back um, for sure. It's borderline trap on the low end, but uh, most of the sales are kind of the 40, 50 -ish range. So more of an I'll be back than a trap, but just barely. Um, but yeah, uh, another cover that was pretty popular back then, but really didn't hold uh, full value for sure. Next, we're going to, as the first of our several NYCC variants to hit the list, we have The Boys, number one. The Ariel Diaz uh, Virgin variant limited to only 250 And back then, it was going for 80 to 90 uh, And this performed like most um, con variants do. It's now a $15 to $30 book. This is a dumpster fire. Um, 
Usually out of these cons, there's maybe one each time, maybe two, maybe one that'll hold really high value and one that'll do similar to when it's released, but most of them fall back. That's what's going to happen this week. Uh, this is our first one and became a dumpster fire. Next, we have 8 Billion Genies. Number one, the NYCC foil variant. So it's just the A cover, but if the foil version that came to NYCC back then, also 80 to 100 bucks, now 20 to 50. Uh, 9.8, 120 to 130. This is also a dumpster fire. Um, another book that has fallen way, way back from those values uh, at NYC, at release at NYCC. Next, we have Star Wars Visions, number one, the Takashi Okazaki NYCC variant, limited to 800. This one was going 80 to 90. This is the one book I thought might have a chance to be worth it just because it was new Star Wars characters and it was kind of a virgin. Um, and it did. It was nine, it's now 90 to 175. Uh, so it's a really overall up, uh, with most of the sales going for over a hundred bucks. Uh, 9.8 is 150 to 275, which is kind of weird. There's an overlap there on the low end of 9.8 and the upper end of raw copies, but, uh, it is what it is. But overall, this book is definitely up, uh, has been a little bit of street cash in terms of if you invested in this book. Um, but it is, also the only one of these variants that's doing that. Uh, next, we have Superman number 75. Uh, the Red Foil NYCC variant limited to 1,000. Now, this one's interesting. Um, I said the other one's the only one that, that was really up, but this one's sort of up. I guess I spoke too soon here. Um, Rollins were going for 80-ish back then. Now it's a 50 to 150 book. Most of the sales are still in the $80, $90 range with occasionally less, occasionally more. So I kind of put this one as up and worth it because there were several sales over 100 bucks, but... Yeah, it's still right through this range. This one is even more interesting in the 9.8s are 75 to 150. So they're almost the exact same range as the raw copies, um, which is really surprising than a 9.8. So it makes me wonder how much longer this is going to have sustain, uh, sustained sales in this range. But so far, it has been able to hold its own. Uh, we will see if that happens long term. Uh, next, we have Batman number 126. Uh, the Tiago de Silva NYCC variant. Um, oh, sorry. No, 126. I looked on the wrong line. This is the Tyler Kirkham NYCC variant, limited to 1,000. Uh, raw copies, 120 to 140. So this was the hottest variant coming out of NYCC. And now it's the least popular one. And it's 20 to 45, 9.8, 75 to 150. This is also a dumpster fire. Another take on these a ton of these Kirkham variants with battle damage characters, and this one has not held at all. Uh, next is Batman number 128. Uh, I looked, that's where I got looking at the wrong line. The Tiago de Silva NYCC variant limited to 80. This was 70, 80 dollars back then. Now it's 30 to 40 dollars. Uh, 9.8, 160 to 130. Uh, not quite a dumpster fire on this Catwoman cover, but definitely a trap. And another book that you definitely want to be patient on. So out of what, six NYCC books, uh, two that did pretty well and four that were three dumpster fires and a trap. <laughs> so that's not really surprising for con variants, really, that ratio. Uh, next, we're going to move into a little Sony spec. We've got news Bad Bunny was going to be El Muerto in a Sonyverse movie. So we got Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, number six, the first appearance of El Muerto on the list. Uh, back then, raw copies were going for 30, 9.8 going for 375. Uh, now, raw copy is 5 to 30, 9.8 still 3 to 375. So, this is only an I'll be back, uh, whereas I really kind of expected it to be more of a trap, um, but really hasn't uh, fallen back as much as I would have thought uh, for El Muerto. All right, with that, we are down to just MCU books, although we still got seven books to talk about. Uh, first up on the MCU side, we have Wolverine Origins, number 10, uh, the first appearance of Dakin, uh, Wolverine's son. Uh, back then, raw copies were going for 50, 9.8 hit 300. On rumors that maybe he'd be part of Deadpool 3 along with Wolverine, we will see. Now, raw copies are 25 to 75, 9.8 250, so really right in the same range. Call this kind of a steady and I'll be back. You could do a little bit better, but for the most part, it's pretty close to what the values were back then. Uh, next, we have Deadpool number one from 1997. Uh, the first ongoing series, uh, the start of Deadpool kind of breaking the fourth wall was the series and really 
kind of setting up his personality that would carry on through the comics. Uh, really, if you read Deadpool before this, he isn't really the same character we see now. Um, back then, raw copies were going for 50, 9.8 to 80. Now it's 35 to 80, 9.8 to 75 to 300. So again, right in the same range. I would call this one actually steady and worth it uh, as the values are a little more consistently at the previous value or higher uh, as compared to the Wolverine Origins book, which was more at that value or lower. But yeah, so still right in the same range. Another book that's been very steady over the last six months. Uh, next, we have Hulk number one from 2008. Uh, first cover appearance of Red Hulk. He doesn't actually appear in the book until issue number two. But this is based on rumors, or well, at the time, rumors. We knew that we were getting Harrison Ford as Thunderbolt Ross uh, on a recast uh, with William Hurt passing away. But this was based on that we might actually see Red Hulk version of Thunderbolt Ross. Because um, sort of was mentioned in She-Hulk. Uh, back then, raw copies were going for 70, 9.8 up to 300. And now it's 50 to 80, 9.83 to 325. Another steady book, 9.8 side kind of worth it. Raw side maybe on the LB back side. Overall, I just kind of put it as steady and worth it. Um, but a book that, yeah, it's been holding right in that same range, uh, like the, all of the last three. Uh, the rest of the MCU book, books, not quite so much. Uh, next, we have Man Thing number one. For solo title for Man Thing, uh, this was obviously in the lead up. Actually, about now it was coming out the Werewolf by Night special that Man Thing appeared in. 7.0s were hitting 240 back then. 9.0 hitting 400. Uh, now 7.5 only costs you 150. 9.4 will cost you 350 to 400. So clearly down. I couldn't find any sales of a 9.0 or a 7.0, but. Overall, just the book is way down on the graded side. Raw copies, 25 to 175, really dependent on condition. So quite a pretty good range there. But overall, this is definitely down in a trap uh, that you can get higher grades for lower values than back then. Tells you all you really need to know. Uh, next, we have Iron Man number 225, uh, the start of the Armor Wars storyline. And obviously, we know this was based on news that the Armor Wars was going to bump from a series to a movie. Uh, and that caused raw copies to jump to 25 bucks, 9.8 going for 240. Uh, no recent 9.8 sales, but now it's a five to $25 book, uh, with most of the sales still in the 10 to 20 ish range. So I put it as an I'll be back, but borderline my prediction of a trap right here. But yeah, most of the sales were on the upper end of that five to 25, but definitely a cheaper book, uh, than it was back then. All right, uh, three more books, uh, two more of which are Iron Man related. We have Infamous Iron Man, number one, the first Tony Stark as an AI. And that was basically rumors that we might see him in Black Panther. We didn't, but we, or we might see him in Armor Wars or in the Riri show. Uh, so far, he has not happened. He didn't happen in Black Panther, but we'll see if we get him later as an AI. Back then, raw copies were going for 25, 9.8 hit 90. Now it's a 10 to $25 book, but with most of the sales in that 20, 25 range, uh, 9.8, 80 to 100. Uh, so we put this as a steady and an I'll be back because most of the sales are still right there, just down a little bit. There are a few sales on the lower end of that raw range, but for the most part, it's pretty close to what it was back then. Uh, last kind of steady book for sure this week. Uh, next, we have Invincible Iron Man number nine, first full appearance of Riri Williams. Obviously, this was... Movie, the Black Panther movie, plus knowing she's getting her own show eventually. Uh, back then, raw copies were 115, 9.8, 4 to 600. Uh, now, raw copies are 45 to 90, 9.8, 225 to 275. So this definitely turned into a trap. Uh, if you like the character, now is a much, probably the best time to chase Riri since we got the news that she was coming to the MCU. This is probably your best chance to get good value on a Riri book. Um, so next, our last book is Black Panther, number one from 2009. First cover of Shuri is Black Panther. She doesn't actually appear as Black Panther until issue number five. But back then, this cover was going for 100 raw, 9.8, 525 in the lead up to the Black Panther movie because the trailer all but confirmed that she was going to be Black Panther. Uh, raw copies then were t are now are all over the place, literally 10 to 100. The, the lower sales, though, are the more recent ones. But yeah, but 
the one hundred dollar sale isn't a month old. I mean, so it's it's a wide range here on raw copies. Same thing with the nine point eight. One fifty to three fifty. Uh, with the most recent nine point eight being the lower end, but yeah, again, this book is a little bit all over the place over the last months. I think the pattern is that it's still coming down, uh, and probably you'd want to be on the lower end of these values for sure. But there's enough sales sustaining it a little bit higher that you you know it's hard to really lock down where the value is at the moment. But overall, this is still definitely a trap. Um, I really enjoyed the Black Panther movie, but uh, yeah, it definitely has not held value. But that's been the case with all these MCU books in the last couple of years. So with that, I want to thank you guys for watching. Once again, we've actually been, overall this last year, we've had a, we continue to have mostly down, but we're back getting at least a few ups, a few more steadies than we have been. So maybe the market is doing a little bit more of a stable. We're more back to where the long-term average is in terms of the number of up, steady, and down books that we should expect. Um, but we will see where things go from here. I want to thank you guys for watching, and we will catch you next time.